All right, so on stream recently, I was using probably my lowest sensitivity to date, but in streamer building, as we know, this definitely poses a lot of problems due to try to catching opponents and have high movement. This poses a question. Is it possible through training to fix a lack of speed at a lower sensitivity? I have also done the opposite using extremely fast sensitivity settings, but for my problems, is it even possible to remove the shakiness? Is this genetic? What can we do? Now, as I aim train, I love to report my findings and hope it can save you countless hours and help you improve faster. The goal today is to further discuss those findings and theories and discuss that sweet spot of high sensitivity versus low sensitivity. While this can be mostly an M and K focused problem, I will do my best to talk at high levels so it is applicable to controller players. Now let's talk theory together from those findings. Any prior games you played are scenarios that you had to master. I say this in quotations because every game is different in terms of scenarios, meaning situations, right? Follow my logic because we're going to continue to ramp up from here. Counter-Strike with Valorant, for example, is a game that focuses more on your 120 to probably ranging to 180 degree cone of vision initially. It would be rare if somebody got the jump on you from behind. If they did, the play was definitely wrong. For M and K or even controllers, a lower sensitivity would beat out an insane high sensitivity and being affected because the range of motion requires precision. Disclaimer, there are always outliers who have more comfort of being one-offs and still being effective at that specific sensitivity for the intended range. It's like using a specific set of tools that was intended for a different job. Perhaps you're trying to use a flat head screwdriver when a Phillips is required. You can still do it. It's probably just not ideal. Now let's say you were playing TDM, Call of Duty, or Quake. This range of motion would be more intense as opponents appear from many locations as you move around the map, spawn behind you, or perhaps a rocket jumping. Remember the disclaimer, someone in theory could always succeed in making this range of motion work at a lower sensitivity perhaps. What we're doing here is putting ideal theoretical sensitivities that would work best for a mass majority. Now what's interesting, you watching this video, is that we all aim train, do the test range, or even if you don't, from years of gaming, you're successful at a lot of different sensitivity settings, so you're probably asking which one is correct. Well that's what we're going to break down. It gets a little complicated because the answer should be simple, use the sensitivity, but it's just not that simple, unfortunately. Let's talk about some of this. Naturally, at a lower sensitivity, you'll obtain major factors, major improvements. You got smoothness and accuracy, but the biggest problem with this is you lose speed. How do we counter this flaw? For controller players, acceleration can be a key component. It, this could also be used for mouse and keyboard as well, but the downside is that this is gonna increase the difficulty to master and you're gonna fall short in some other areas. So it is a good solution, but it's not 100% for most. Another solution specific for M and K we can discuss is utilizing your full mouse pad and find a sweet spot before you have to lift your mouse. Let's showcase MS Paint in the background. While you can use a technique to keep resetting your mouse to find a comfort spot, the downside is visually you're always having to lift and you're gonna miss, have to repeat the steps, and it's not just a nice smooth movement going left to right, bouncing up and down. It's not as clean, and you can theoretically say it's not ideal when you're trying to go into a straight line, right? A straight line is always going to be better and help you out more. But of course, at some point, while this can be positive, you're gonna realize you're gonna need some speed to be successful. Here's an example of a specific scenario that can help put this in perspective. Call it Spider Shot 180, which is an aim lap scenario for mouse and keyboard players. If you're a controller, apply the same logic. While it can help build that speed up, at a lower sensitivity, you're gonna notice at some point, if you go too slow, you either won't reach it in really quickly or you're gonna run into the other problem where you have to lift your mouse. So if you're on controller, you're gonna be spinning and you're not gonna be able to keep up with somebody who's moving fast, right? Now let's go opposite spectrum. For a higher sensitivity, you gain the pros of speed. Speed helps you target switch faster, fight recoil, obtain faster targets, obtain targets faster, and it helps you get into more of that flow. The downside is you have shaky hands like myself, this sometimes can't be a solution. When my adrenaline kicks up, my hands want to reciprocate with more energy. Same with control players, that dexterity required now is even tougher, and all you got is your thumbs, right? The kind of infamous discussion with arms versus just using your thumbs, which is one of the biggest complaints we all see, right? With a higher sensitivity, you're going to find that you're going to overshoot, you're not going to be as steady, and you're going to miss more. So what can we do? Balancing by being more tense to add more control and stopping power can help, but this is also going to stress out your tendons and may not last longer in gaming sessions. Additionally, when you add more tension, this can actually slow you down as now you're coming from your speed to a grinding halt. Now, when discussing a lower sensitivity movement, 
you can kind of keep a flow by being more smooth because you're trying to be more precise and you won't overshoot as much, mostly because you have to be as efficient as possible. Your goal should be to be fast, have efficient pathing, and most importantly, be accurate. You're probably saying, Daz, well, this just makes sense. Why are you repeating this? Well, remember, missing shots is a waste of time. Being too fast can cause you to miss shots and have poor pathing. Though being too slow with a sensitivity can cause you to not keep up. Let's go back to MS Paint again. Good pathing is going from point A to point B as efficiently as possible with no overshoot and bouncing between targets and gaining speed and momentum to your next target. Uh, I've used Pong as an example many, many times. Now, after seeing all these pros and cons, you see the issue, right? There's not necessarily one that just causes you to excel across the board. There's always going to be a specific tool that you're going to use in that specific scenario to gain the best results overall, no matter which way you spin it. Now, let's just apply Apex Legends to this because it does require you to be precise, have a full range of motion, control refined recoil, and be quick on flicks. We see other games are just one single category, and sometimes there is a sensitivity that it can, for you personally, encompass all. But in Apex Legends, you just have way too many variables at play. So essentially, how do you solve this? Well, you can essentially play more aggressively to always put yourself in close range encounters to be successful in, or reposition to mid range to always put yourself in a comfort zone. But it always won't happen that way, unfortunately. As zone closes, you're unfortunately gonna have to play close range. As your team anchors, and maybe you get caught out in the open, you have to shoot range, well, you're gonna be forced into these situations whether you like it or not. So let's dive further into more answers. Depending on your role in the squad, you need a sensitivity that will help you match the success for your comfort levels. You as a player will find a balance is very different from someone else's. Controller players need to go into the range, go close range, mid range, long range, then finally practice the full range of motion and pretend you're being surprised by so many different angles and see how fast you can react. Mouse and keyboard, I have an aimlab playlist of scenarios I like to work on currently that feel ideal for Apex Legends covering every single one of these categories. What you'll find is if you use various sensitivity settings that some scores will be higher and some are gonna be lower. You're gonna discover the same for controller. You're just gonna see settings that excel in a specific area, but fall short in another. It's, there's gonna be a sacrifice and a give and take numbers wise that needs to occur and there's no way around it. That one sensitivity will cap out, same as a faster one or a lower one will. So here's even more solutions and answers. Look for a jack of all trades settings and look for a balance to be okay with what you might be satisfied being weaker at and compensate with a loadout or attachments to help you get to that point. Maybe your specific role is different. You can change your FOV settings to help with this. You can change ADS sensitivities as well and vice versa. Different mice, different mice skates, larger mouse pads, more desk space, all the above. But remember, try not to go too crazy with all these variables because there's a lot of them because at some point you just need to sit down and practice it. You may not feel comfortable with a lower sensitivity, but it can still teach you something. So don't be afraid to try the opposite spectrum just like I have in the past month and why I'm making this video today. Also, last tip, don't worry about ruining your quote unquote muscle memory as if you're going to get worse. You're not. You need as a player to train every part of your aiming using your fingers, wrist, arm, and shoulders. Using a higher sensitivity will force you to use your fingers and wrists more. A lower sensitivity will utilize more of your arm and shoulder. A balance will be required if you kind of find the middle ground. You can't avoid using any one specific part altogether. At some point, you're going to have to use them in some way, shape, or form. If you're on controller, I'm going to be honest, you're a little more limited, which is why controller settings are able to find that quote-unquote best sensitivity and it can be more applicable. But it does come with some downsides and there are some strengths and weaknesses. You as a person need to discover what that strength and weakness is. And I find across the board of anybody I'm coaching is that it's going to be all over the place and be a little different. Now, I'm going to be discussing this more on Saturday stream. I feel like no matter how many times I discuss this, I just am not getting the perfect video out there. And I'm going to keep trying until it helps you. So I hope this helped you out today. Let me know your thoughts. What should I go more in depth on? How can we phrase this better to help you mechanically? I really want to help solve the mechanics so then you can focus on the most important subject was positioning. And don't worry, we have more guides like that coming out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.